on tariffs. Uh, these are subject to unilateral changes by telephone operators. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Honorable Charles Conzo. Mr. Speaker, before I ask a question, I first want to declare my interest on this matter. Having been a shareholder of this company and having lost a lot of money, Mr. Speaker, and I believe, Mr. Speaker, along with many other Kenyans, because nobody has ever benefited from this deal. Mr. Speaker, just to refresh your memory, when there was a censor motion on the then Minister of Finance, one Honorable Boni Kawale had the following to say, Mr. Speaker, I quote from the Hansard, to address Kenyans who were conned into buying shares in the initial public offer, IP of Safaricom, the then Minister must go. Mr. Speaker, those words have come to be true. Safaricom is over 50% Kenyan. It's a Kenyan multinational with over, 750, over, over 750,000 local shareholding and government itself that 5%. Mr. Speaker, the permanent secretary in the same ministry has had the following to say on the price wars. He says, Mr. Speaker, the government and millions of Kenyans have heavily invested in the communication sector and any losses in the investment could have a ripple effect in the economy. And Mr. Speaker goes on to say, I am not opposed to reduction on prices, but they have to make economic sense. The competition has to take care of reinvestment in the sector as well as shareholding. So my first clarification, Mr. Speaker, is, is the government conning its own people by coming up with policies which are going to ensure within another one, two years, this value in the, the, the value of Safaricom share is going to go as low as two shillings. The other clarification, Mr. Speaker, is on the issue of employment. The Prime Minister, Right Honorable Prime Minister, has very cleverly avoided answering question C. Mr. Speaker, the competitors have their call centers in their home country. Most of the companies is a requirement in those countries that a mobile operator, a particular percentage must be owned locally, which is no longer a requirement here. If, Mr. Speaker, we allow all these telephone operators to have call centers back at home, is the government keeping to its promise of creating <coughs> employment for the youth. Iraq, Honorable Prime Minister, would you want to respond to one question at a time, or you want to take a few questions? Yes, Mr. Speaker, I'll respond at a time. Mr. Speaker, uh, I agree with Honorable Member that there can be sometimes a negative competition. In other words, meaning that companies can actually compete themselves out of business. But Mr. Speaker, it is also accepted worldwide that competition is healthy. Mr. Speaker, without, when we had a monopoly, Mr. Speaker, the cost of services was so high. Mr. Speaker, remember one time, just even to get a, a telephone set was costing as much as 120,000 shillings. Mr. Speaker, when the, the market was liberalized, the cost completely came down. Now, Mr. Speaker, to just 2,000 or even less. So, Mr. Speaker, the cost of communication need to be made affordable to as many people as possible, Mr. Speaker. And this is exactly what is happening. We have, Mr. Speaker, one of the highest penetration rates in the world. Close to 20 million people are now have uh, um, uh, mobile telephone set, Mr. Speaker. But what has, Mr. Speaker, been a problem is the cost. So that m people make less phone calls because they cannot afford. Mr. Speaker, if the costs are lowered, the volumes will increase, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and therefore, the economy itself will benefit. So, Mr. Speaker, that's the reason why we have said that we have no intention to interfere with this competition. Second, Mr. Speaker, um, the, the call centers, there are call centers which are outside the country, but there are also call centers which are also in the country, Mr. Speaker. So what we are saying, 
is that whereas the, the, the company may reduce those that is employing directly, these services are outsourced, Mr. Speaker, and more jobs are generally overall created within the economy. And that, Mr. Speaker, will help us to deal with the issue of unemployment. The Honorable Eseri, Doctor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the Prime Minister for that answer. Mr. Speaker, while it's true that uh, competition is healthy, but free market economy does not mean less affair. Mr. Speaker, interconnectivity fees is very important. And in this case, this competition is going to lead to complete demise of the industry. So even those people who are not yet connected will never get connected. Mr. Speaker, what is the government doing recognizing that Airtel Kenya, which Airtel, which is now in Kenya, did not have a GSM platform in India. And in fact, the profits they are making in, in Africa and Kenya specifically is what they are using now to set up a GSM platform in India, while our own Safaricom is collapsing. What is the government doing to ensure that while we are there to free market economics, we still ensure that our locally bred company has got the full protection by putting adequate interconnectivity fees? Mr. Speaker, in fact, uh, I am going to address this particular subject uh, next week, the issue of the cost of interconnectivity. But for now, Mr. Speaker, I want to say that in the rest of the world, Mr. Speaker, it is very easy to be able to connect or to transfer from one network to the other network, Mr. Speaker. But because you have enjoyed monopoly for far too long, that's the reason why the interconnectivity fees have remained very high, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, we have discussed this matter with the Minister for uh, Information and Communication to ensure that, Mr. Speaker, that the costs are made more affordable. Mr. Speaker, Airtel has invested heavily here in Kenya. And to that extent, Mr. Speaker, it is a Kenyan company. Mr. Speaker, we are talking about attracting foreign investment in our country, Mr. Speaker. So we should not, Mr. Speaker, try to discriminate. If, Mr. Speaker, they are uh, coming up with an economic rate, it is not only Safaricom that is going to suffer. Even Party Airtel itself will suffer, Mr. Speaker. So if they can afford it, why can Safaricom not afford it? Time has come for Safaricom also to face competition. Honorable Mungatana. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I wanted to go on the question of employment again on the issue of the outsourcing. Airtel Kenya and you have outsourced a number of services which has resulted directly in job losses in Kenya. Telcom Kenya CEO, and I want to quote him, Mr. Michael Gossen, he said, the price wars could result in restructuring of their workforce. It's another way of saying they are going to cut on the direct employment. Mr. Speaker, on 8th of February, Bob Colimo, the CEO of Safaricom, is quoted as saying, there are 3,000 people that we need to keep the engine running. That is in Safaricom. Right now, our strategy is not to reduce the workforce and I have made it uh, very clear to them. Meaning, for now, as they feel the, the, the price war, their strategy is not to, re but it is going to affect them in future. And they will be forced to cut uh, jobs. Now, the question we want to put the Prime Minister, uh, notwithstanding his arguments about the, the BPO outsourcing, how is the government coming in to protect jobs that are to given to Kenya. So many of these people, Bwana Prime Ministers, who are employed in this sector are young Kenyans. And they are in the ICT, they have nowhere else to go. I ask, how is the government coming in to protect these uh, job losses? Thank you. Mr. Speaker, the government is very concerned about job security for Kenyans who are in employment. And we will do everything possible protect the jobs, Mr. Speaker. However, uh, Mr. Speaker, 
we must also look at the other side of the equation. This is the profit side. The companies he's talking about have been used to making billions and billions of shillings every year, Mr. Speaker. And that's what they're posting, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, part of that money can be used to retain people in employment, Mr. Speaker. Instead of, Mr. Speaker, saying yeah, we are going to interfere with the competition because jobs are going to be lost. The company is referring to, Mr. Speaker, has been one of the biggest profit-making companies in the, in the country, Mr. Speaker. Why? Because they pay their staff peanuts. Pay properly, employ more people, Mr. Speaker, so that, Mr. Speaker, we can be able to retain these people in employment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, many rural Kenyans are yet to enjoy access to mobile network coverage. Prime Minister, in his own statement, did mention that 20 million Kenyans have access to mobile net network coverage, which means 19 million Kenyans have no access to this vital service. And most of these rural Kenyans live, Kenyans live in rural areas. Mr. Speaker, sir, in a neighboring countries such as Uganda and Tanzania, even uh, their citizens in very tiny villages have access to this mobile network coverage because their governments provide incentives, such as tax waivers and other um, incentives to these, uh, mob, uh, to these um, mobile network providers. And as a result, they are enabled to ensure that most of their citizens are, do, actually do enjoy a mobile network, network coverage. What measures will our government take, Mr. Prime Minister, to ensure that many rural Kenyans with limited, with limited purchasing power have access to this vital service? Mr. Speaker, I said one of, uh, one of the highest, not, not highest, but Mr. Speaker, 20 million in a population of 39 million. And Mr. Speaker, the honorable member need to appreciate that a, a number of those who are remaining are children, some of them children which are still being nursed, who are not yet in the age of owning a mobile phone. So if you say that is about 15 million people, Mr. Speaker, that leaves a very small percentage of people who do not have access to mobile telephone. However, Mr. Speaker, we would like to spread the network as wide as possible, Mr. Speaker. Um, and this is the reason why we are talking about cooperation among these competing uh, companies. For example, shared infrastructure. So, Mr. Speaker, having, for example, one uh, tower hosting all the rest, Mr. Speaker, instead of duplications where one operator puts a tower here, the other operator puts a tower here, it increases the cost, Mr. Speaker. These are some of the issues that we are talking about so that we can have higher penetration of the country and make it possible and cheaper for our people to be able to communicate with each other. Thank you. Yeah, you, Honorable Mutudo, and then Honorable Bonnie Khalwale. I think the two questions the right Honorable Prime Minister will be able to take them together. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Speaker, sir. Looking at the figures given by uh, Right Honorable Prime Minister, you realize that you contributed only 0.1% of the total revenues, whereas if you look at the actual numbers, they have 1.3, say 1.4 million subscribers. Uh, there's such a huge discrepancy between the revenue earning compared to the total number of customers that perhaps the Prime Minister would wish to enlighten us, how come that Safaricom is paying well over 20 times, 50 times more than you in relation to the number of subscribers? Two, Mr. Speaker, sir, if you look at BAT Airtel and look at the number, the base of their customers, that is about 1.9, about 2 million people compared to Safaricom, about uh, 15 million, that's about eight times. Look again at the revenue paid by Safaricom, yeah, and you find that it is about 10, 15 times more than what this bad airtel is doing. Mr. Speaker, sir, shall I be in order, therefore, to ask, to ask uh, the Honorable right, uh, Prime Minister what goes on in revenue correction in those two companies to, to an extent that 
there is an apparent untaxed or low taxation levels in those two companies or higher taxation in the case of Safaricom. I thank you. Yes, Honorable Bonakhalwale. Honorable Prime Minister, you can take the two questions together if you don't mind. Honorable Bonakhalwale, can you ask your question? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what we are experiencing in Kenya today is not a president in the world. This company went to Malawi. The government of Malawi was forced to intervene. They went to Uganda, the same. They went to DRC Congo, the same. And finally, they went to Sri Lanka. Mr. Speaker, yeah, Mr. Speaker, for the benefit of the House, in Sri Lanka, when they discovered that this was a problem, they then moved in by introducing a floor price. That yes, the wars can go on, but they can only go this far down. They put the floor price. Airtel in Sri Lanka, Mr. Speaker, went to the Supreme Court, to the, uh, to the Court of Appeal. They were dismissed. They lost. Went to the Supreme Court of Sri Lanka, and the Supreme Court of Sri Lanka said that no, they must protect jobs. No, they must protect investment by the locals, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, why I was going this route, I wanted to ask the, the Prime Minister, who is purely a politician, and the Minister, who is purely a politician, uh, allow me proceed, my thoughts proceed. to flow. The Prime Minister, a politician, the Minister in the Ministry, a politician, they have refused to listen to our technocrats. Mr. Speaker, our technocrat there is none other than the PS Vitange Demo. Have taken the trouble, Mr. Speaker, of downloading his CV. Mr. Speaker, this is an eminent Kenyan. He got his PhD, Mr. Speaker, in industrial economics and the thesis was growth determinants of micro and small manufacturing enterprises in Kenya, the University of Sheffield in the year 2000, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Vitengo has advised this government. Can you ask a question? Yes, I'm about to ask. It is important that I build it, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> the PS on 24th of January 2011 had the following to say to the government. The PS demo, PS for Information and Communication Ministry, strongly opposed the price wars, saying they did not make business sense and added that he had asked the Communication Commission of Kenya, CCK, to look into the issue. The Kenya Revenue Authority also expressed fears that the price wars might lead to reduction in tax collection. So what I'm asking the Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, sir, is that what is this that politicians know to the extent that you ignore the advice from technocrats, outstanding sons of this republic, patriotic, just because you want to respond to Order. expediencies, Mr. Speaker? Is that a statement or a question? Yes, the statement is, why can the ministry, the, the government, listen to the technocrats and put a floor price yes. so that these price wars are controlled, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, uh, Honorable Mutuzo was more concerned about the differentials in uh, tax uh, uh, revenues or, or contributions by the different um, service uh, providers. Mr. Speaker, I want to say that uh, I don't have the formula which the Kenya Revenue Authority uses in levering these taxes. I think, Mr. Speaker, that would account for the differentials uh, that there are uh, relative to, to the, 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 the figures. So, Mr. Speaker, um, that is uh, something that is expendable and that information is easily available at the Kenya Revenue Authority. But, Mr. Speaker, because these figures I have are from the Kenya Revenue Authority itself. Mr. Speaker, I have listened very carefully to Honorable Boni Haluale. Now, Mr. Speaker, I am not aware of the information that Mr. Boni Aluale is trying to provide, that Mr. Ndembo has advised this government. Mr. Ndembo himself is part of this government. He's a permanent secretary, Mr. Speaker. And, Mr. Speaker, we listened to experts 
advice, Mr. Speaker, but there are several other advisors, and there are also several different opinions on a number of issues. So that, Mr. Speaker, the PhD, which Ms. Ndemo did, Mr. Speaker, is of no consequence in as far as the government political concern. So, Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, I don't need, I don't need information. Order, the right honorable prime minister I does not need information. I don't need information, Mr. Speaker, because I'm answering your question. Not with the Order, right honorable Bani Khalwari. Proceed, right honorable prime minister. Mr. Speaker, it would be unfortunate if we were to be fighting the, the price wars of the cooperators here in the house. That some operators would sponsor people to come and fight their wars in this house. So, Mr. Speaker, the commercial competition is healthy. And Mr. Speaker, there's no, no company that is mad that they will try to lower the prices to a level when they are going to be continuing to make losses. So, Mr. Speaker, I would really urge honorable members, let us allow healthy capitalist competition. Let the House not really become the <laughs> agent of trying to fight the war against uh, four and on behalf of one against the other. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What's your point of order? Mr. Speaker, this is a bit serious. The, the Prime Minister has asserted here that we must, as a house, allow healthy capitalist competition. And yet the Prime Minister is aware that uncontrolled capitalist competition is what almost brought the American economy to its knees. And this is why we are saying, why can't you look at that case of Sri Lanka? We have raised the issue of job losses. We are raising the issue of loss of revenue. Why can't the Prime Minister look at that case and see maybe there is something that we are missing? Can the Prime Minister undertake, at least on behalf of Kenyans, to look at this so that we save the situation? We don't have unhealthy capitalist competition. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'd say that I was going to address this issue actually more comprehensively next week. But Mr. Speaker, I also want to inform the honorable members that I'm going to convene a meeting. I've already scheduled a meeting for all the operators in this sector in order to discuss to, with a view of Mr. Speaker of just leveling the playing field. Mr. Speaker, the government's responsibility is to be a regulator so that the field is level for all the operators, Mr. Speaker. And this is our responsibility, Mr. Speaker, and we are, we are going to do it uh, properly, Mr. Speaker, so that the competition continues to remain healthy. The last supplementary question, Honorable Charles Caloso. Mr. Speaker, I initially had declined to buy shares from Safaricom until I heard the Prime Minister encouraging Kenyans to buy shares, which I went ahead and bought. So, Mr. Speaker, when this matter comes here, it's not a matter of buying, uh, fighting price wars here. There were Kenyans who were advised by the government, including the Prime Minister himself, that this is a good investment. And, Mr. Speaker, why it is even more serious, and that's why I asked whether the government called its own citizens, because they bought shares which were offloaded by the government itself. So, Mr. Speaker, it appears clearly the government Amount, is amount to the government calling its own citizens by abandoning them at this time. My question to the Right Honorable Prime Minister, is the government prepared to compensate the shareholders because the words the government promised have turned out not to have been true and they have turned out to be false? Mr. Speaker, I did not mislead any Kenyan. 